Oh, hello. My name is Andrew, and I am a traditional artist. Now, my primary uh, discipline is more focused on pencil and graphite drawings. But in the past couple of months, I'm trying to branch out and trying to, you know, um, learn some other mediums, such as this one, Copic markers. And, uh, and I also learned how to do oil painting. See, because of the pandemic going on, we have a lot of free time trying to learn new stuff. And um, so far, I've been learning some watercolors, pencil drawings. Copic markers. And oil painting. And during those course of learning these kind of um, skills, I also dwell on learning some other stuff like digital drawing. All right, so basically uh, for digital drawing, it's now becoming a very, very um, common thing for today's artists because not only because it's very versatile, it's very easy to use, and it's very easy to manipulate. So the, um, this episode, I'm gonna discuss a certain application that most artists tends to use, and uh, that will be Artflow. Now, I've been using Artflow for quite some time now since I got my first tablet. So, there's a lot of um, applications out there dedicated for artists such as uh, Metabang, um, Procreate if you're using iPads and Apple products. But for free Android users, Artflow should be like one of their list. And uh, today, uh, we'll be discussing on some of the um, on how I actually this is just a review and um, hopefully it's more like a review slash uh, tutorial on how to use this application. Um, I've been using this application for years now and um, kind of well versed when it comes to using it and uh, I'm just wanting to part some ideas to you guys to see um, how easy it is um, how to use Artflow. Now most of if you've been seeing my videos, um, time-lapse videos to be precise, most of them are be, all of them are done in Artflow. And as the time progresses, there's a, a new things I've discovered, and I'm going to part this to you guys. Hopefully you guys would learn a thing or two on how to use this particular application, which is quite easy. Even uh, doesn't really require a, a specific uh, like um, like a comprehensive study on how to do this but if you're a beginner or novice or even an advanced um, user or artist you will tend to grasp the uh, you know the gist of things so I'm um, enough of the intro I'm going to show you on how to do it all right so let's begin now before we go any further, I would like to stress out the fact that before launching the Artflow app or to any other um, drawing apps out there, whether it be an Apple or an Android, um, it's always uh, an important thing to consider the screen orientation. Now, what, do, what, what am I talking about? Now, whenever you color something in a certain tablet or phone, it's not the real color that is being displayed there, it's just like an exaggeration of the color that you're trying to do with your artwork. So what I do is this. I go to settings, right, and I go to display, and go to screen mode. Now, most tablets have these, have these options, vivid and neutral. 
Now for vivid, apparently what you'll be seeing there is like the exaggeration of the colors. But when you try to print them out, when you try to post it online, it's not what it turns out to be. So if you want to have a certain, you know, parallel with or the same thing as what you'll be seeing either on print, physical print or online posting, I always choose neutral. There, uh, in that way, every color that you're trying to do on your artwork will also manifest on the other when you share this online or you actually print out the actual, for example, like t-shirts or posters. This is the, uh, the settings that you will consider um, setting up your tablet and or phone before starting your piece. All right, so enough with that. Let's proceed now with the tutorial proper. Okay, so I'm now launching the Artflow app and this is what you'll be seeing. All right, so as you can see, it's very simple. Unlike the other apps like um, Clipart or um, there's some applications there out there that is kind of complex but Artflow has a good job on developing a very simple interface for you to have an easy grasp on what, on how to control it, how to manipulate, and what have you. All right, so let's first start with the basics. So as you can see on the upper right hand corner, these are the tools that you that mostly you guys will be using. All right, we got here the pen. Let me just uh, erase that for a bit. All right. Okay, we got here the pens. We got the eraser, the smudger, the paint, and the um, you know, the cropping tool. All right. Um, now, as you can see, now uh, let me remind you that this is a full version of the um, art flow. Um, you can download this for free if you want to, but some of the um, brushes are actually locked. Now, here in the Philippines, I purchased this app for 300 pesos. It's a one-time thing. It's not a per-monthly basis, so that's good. So, once that you have purchased the full version, which is around 300 pesos here in the Philippines, I'm not pretty sure how to convert that in your country, but again, once that you purchase the app, it's a done deal. It's a one-time payment. You can transfer this to a different phone, but it can only work on one specific device. I tried that before on the other tablet, and it doesn't really, <laughs> it's not like a buy one, take one thing. But again, the good thing about this application is that it's a one-time payment, not a monthly, uh, not, not a monthly charge. So again, it's a big savings, and I've been using this um, application for so many years now, and um, it works wonders. All right, so let's go with the um, let's go deeper onto these tools on the upper right hand corner. Now, the um, the first thing I'm going to point out is the brushes. All right, once that you have clicked that brush, all right, let me just go back there. Okay, so click that, then you'll be presented with a set of tools. Okay, primarily these are like the um, the one below are the different kinds of, of brushes. We got the, the actual pen, we got the pencil, we got the paint, we got the airbrush, we got the thing. Well, these two are actually cut, uh, special kind of brushes. And you can also custom if you wish. All right, so let's go ahead and browse onto this. We got, again, the pencil, got from ranging from the H level to the B, got chalk. Most of them are locked. Um, if I can recall, some of these are locked if you haven't purchased any of uh, the full version. So again, I mean, if you're going to shell out some money, Artflow is the best app for me, right? So, um, so that is for the pencil. Uh, well, this is for the pencil. Now, this one is for the pen markers and this one is for the paint that wide variety for example like uh, yeah we'll, we'll just get to that later on now these are the brushes for the air brushes now this is what I'm talking about 
these two right here, okay, this this thing right here, it has a very special set of brushes that you can use. We have the half tone, we got the speckle raster. Okay, you can use that in your heart's content, and we're going to use that later on on this video. Right? And this is another section where you can also see a variety of special kind of brush. We've got smoke, we've got crystal, hairy, okay, rust. I use that a lot in some of the textures. So these are texture kind of brushes. And the last icon, this is when you can customize it. As you can see, there's a plus uh, icon over there. Okay, so what does that do? Okay, let's go and tap that. You can actually try to add something. Like for example, this one right here. Well, uh, it's not working. It's, it's kind of com complex when you're trying to do that. But these are the custom brushes that I actually acquired. For example, this one custom, right? So you see it right there. Okay, so so that's a good stuff right there. So again, these are the main tools for the brushes, erasers, and what have you. All right, pen, eraser, smudger, uh, paint, and obviously the cropping tool. Now, on the left side, or on the right side, <laughs> I'm sorry, on the right side, you got here the uh, the you know the uh, what do I call this. Oh, let me just go back there. So this one right here, this is for the opacity. If you want to go darker, you want to go lighter, that is the uh, the slider that you need to consider. And this one right here is if you want to be like a thin um, stroke, broad stroke. Now, it is actually quite, you know, extensive because some applications, they have this already a pre a preset type of thickness. Here it's very fluid. You can actually you can it gives you more liberty in terms about like you know uh, what to call this uh, making your brushes like thicker, thinner, and obviously if you want to have it more you can control the opacity. All right, so that and you can use that on different kinds of stuff. For example, like uh, if I choose um, let's say charcoal, for example. Now, if I slide these two all the way to its maximum, this is what you'll be getting. If you're going to slide them all the way down, well, because you already uh, maxed out the minimum requirement, for example, if you like this, so that's what you'll be getting. If you slide it like that, the thinner it gets. If you slide it like so, the darker it gets. Okay, so these two are very useful. Apparently on the right side, every tool here is very useful. All right, so um, if we're going to undo, for example, and this is actually the staple of all of all digital artists, is the undo button, and where is that located? Right over here, right over there. This thing right here is the undo, and obviously this too is the redo. So that's the undo, redo buttons. Alright, so so whatever we did a while ago, if you want to, you know, to undo it, just press that thing over there and it does it for you. If you want, for example, if you kind of uh, uh, um, over undid what you've done, then you can just do the redo. There you go. The redo button will just going to return or to give you back whatever the undo button has taken away from you. All right, so so we have already discussed. Oh yeah, and most especially the color. Okay, this is the color wheel. Okay, it has two variations: the RGB and the HSV. Now it doesn't really uh, is is not that much of a big deal for me. Whatever color that or most that I use but the one thing I, I have um, this is just a uh, if you guys are actually having problems with skin tones for example um, there's one thing I discovered okay let me just go ahead and erase this ok 
Okay, that's the cropping tool right there. So, for example, like you're having a problem with skin tones. Always remember, I always set it to orange, right? And then if you want, so this is like the orange, right? Um, just go and um, do that. So that's orange. Now, if you want to make it a skin tone, what I do is um, these two right here, that is where I'm going to manipulate it. Saturation and I'm not sure what I, but let me just show you how. So for example, I do it like that. Well, I always toggle this too, not that. At the top I don't touch, but just the bottom, All right? So, example like that. If you're going to, that's a dark tone, and then you just go ahead and move the slider the color wheel because you need to have a starting point first right and then you just go all the way and then you can have a variety of skin tones so that is the color wheel function there's also a preset color okay that is already laid out to you all right so that's good all right so we have already discussed about some of the things on the right side okay Let's now focus on the on this side right here. All right, now these are we're going to okay. These section will give you the control on the layers, projects, saving, cut, copy, paste. All right, so this thing right here is the layer. All right, if I push that in, then it will just show you the layers that you'll be working on. Now, depending on the uh, the size, the DPI, or the, um, the orientation of your canvas right here, it will that will depend on how many pages that this art flow will be providing you. For example, this one right here, it has a measurement of, for example, this one has a measurement of two, 2560 by 1600 right so <clears throat> if that will be the case then the number of layers which this is the button by the way that you will be adding the layers right just to let you know okay now it will depend sometimes it's 50 50 sometimes it's 19 so we're on the layer 50 so, which means that depending on how big, this is like a, like a small um, orientation, so it's giving you like 50. But if the higher the, um, the, the higher the resolution is, the lower the layers will be counted for. All right, so that is what, um, well, that's about it. And uh, for the uh, layer section, now for the um, this one right here, okay, this uh, this six boxes that is the um, the button where you can pull up your recent artworks. So if I want to pull up my uh, this artwork right here, it will prompt you if you want to save the current artwork that you will be leaving. So you can either have save. And it will just pull up your, your, uh, you know, your past, your, your previous artworks that you need to continue. All right. So, for example, like I want to go back. It will always be uh, uh, the. It will just be on this side right here, for you not to be confused. You can also label your projects, okay, for you to get organized. For example, like I want to label this one right here. All I have to do is just to click this um, this icon and it will just give you this. You can type whatever name of the project you want. Cobra Kai, for example, for this one. It will up. You can also change the DPIs, but you know I'm not going to touch that. So you will be able to rename that. It's now set to Cobra Kai so that at least you will know because the problem with 
with some of these are you know see, you see these blanks I that I'm not sure which one's which so I renamed that for example this, this one's Cobra Kai this one's Isa this one is a, a thumbnail this one is for the webtoon comic template so again it's like your library it's like your assets that's pretty much it so let's go back to the screen that, we're, that we've been working on all right so this one right here the uh, this is the, uh, this is where you're going to manipulate the actual canvas you can resize it you can enlarge it you can save it you know but again um, I would not recommend for example like this one um, I'm going to let's say get, uh, get an asset here for example all right for example this one right here this is my image if I'm going to resize that it will well it's not it's okay see and it will so it will actually like if you're not happy with the uh, with the settings that you already have for example like uh, in the middle of your in the middle of your um, drawing and it seems that it didn't fit right it didn't actually fit the way you want it to be so you can all you can always resize the canvas like so and then save it and then you can just crop it which will be uh, we'll be discussing later on regarding about this okay so there now this third uh, this icon right over here that is it's like a settings that's the settings menu. You can either have a, like a new image. You want to go to your uh, to revisit your previous artworks. The settings. You can also record whatever you're doing. That is what I've been doing in the past couple of months, right? For example, I'm, I'll be doing an, uh, a digital drawing, right? And I want to have a time lapse sketch. I always enable this first before I continue or before I start, so that it will again. Um, it will create a, a time-lapse video that you can share or you can uh, you can um, you can edit later on right so but again this feature only comes if you paid the full version if you didn't pay for the full version if you didn't pay for the uh, for the act for the app this will be disabled okay this one you can export image you can save it to your uh, you can save it on your tablet or your phone you can also share that as well print I don't use that because I don't have a printer got save so that sometimes software crashes right now it's always a known fact for artists that whenever they're doing it's like a save point just in case there's something happened and unexpectedly at least they know they have it saved also, if you want to make another copy of what you're doing, you can also use this. So we have another copy that you can manipulate later on of a say, for example, you liked it. You liked your, uh, uh, you liked your illustration and you want to have uh, another uh, rendition out of it without compromising or without redoing the drawing again. You can always have a saved copy so that it will have, it will show on your gallery for you to manipulate later on. All right, so so that's about it. Now for the export, right? You can save it again. You can save it on your device. Either you can uh, this one right. Let me just uh, go back there. This option will just save where the art flow um, designates. It's automatic. Here you can save it to. A specific folder on your device for example on the SD card or the internal storage what have you this is the option that you will go into um, to choose if you want to share this for example in Facebook or to another device that's the thing that is the uh, the, the option that you'll be gunning for this one is just for Sam I'm not pretty sure what that is Right. Um, but again, the one thing I'm, I'm happy about this is because of this thing right here, the transparent background. Because what it does, 
it saves not just the entire artwork, but it only saves the active pixels that you have drawn paint on, which you can transfer it for some for example something else. Instead of you like meticulously uh, erasing the background, all you have to do is just what you do is click that it will turn it will turn green and you will be able to save your um, your image for example like this uh, let me just uh, show it to you real quick now this Lara Croft illustration that I've made this is a transparent um, image that I have saved a while ago remember that transparent background that I'm, I'm talking about because for example like this um, you have another background, right? Let's just paint that with this color. Right? So let's compare. If I save that without the transparent background, that's disabled currently, and save it. Right? So, when I add the image, Just give me time here for a moment. See? It will, not only the image that will be uh, included onto the imported image, but also the background. Now, watch. For example, like uh, I just, um, this background, I'm going to, you know, to take it away. And just this. Let me just uh, draw something. You know, just to. Alright, so I'm going to save it now, but this time with a transparent background on, saving it. Remember, we have disabled the background over here to make this happen. Alright, so I'm going to delete that and add an image. It will be on your phone anyways. New. See, there we go. And, oop, I kind of messed up there for a bit. I'll just go back there. I'm sorry. All right, there we go. Okay, it. See? And you can still, like, sometimes they have some bugs, but you just need to go and uh, redo, undo, redo everything. And then, for example, like, if it's transparent, you can actually draw behind it. See? That is the beauty of the transparent uh, background saving mode, if you ask me. Now, let's dive in deeper onto these layers. Now, let's say uh, if, you, if you click, let's say, a certain layer. It will show you a list of things, right? It will show you like if you want to duplicate your artwork, if you want to merge this to a um, to the layer below it, if you want to have some effects, transition, if you want to scrape off whatever you did on that uh, on that on that layer without deleting the layer per se, if you want to move it into a certain um, position, or if you just want to delete that entirely, that's up to you. Right. There's also you need to import your your um, an image saved onto your phone, or you can just take a photo of yourself if you're just you know too vain. Blending mode. This is where the uh, the overlay, the darken, the multiply, what have you. This actually like manipulates your your digital even better when it comes to coloring. And uh, let me just you know let me just add an, let me just import a picture for example. So I'm going to get to one of my assets over here. Let's see, what what do we have here? Oh, that's art flow. Let's say Squid Game. I know it's kind of famous right now, so don't okay, don't judge me. All right, so for example, um, I want to manipulate the image. I go to um, I go to this effects right now uh, when I click on it it will show if you want to have it grayscaled it's gray 
if you want it. I always do the undo. For example, whenever you manipulate, for example, like grayscale, right? All you have to do, if you don't want that, you can always rely on the handy dandy undo button. Alright, so let's undo that. If you want to have it like, um, I don't know, say negative, so it's the inverted version of whatever color is currently present onto the image. All right. If you want to have a um, solarized effect, see, which is kind of cool, right? If you want to have it like um, contrast, if you wanted to make it like you know very dark or very bright, what have you, it's your choice. It's your canvas. It's your artwork. You can do whatever you want with it, right? And um, if you want to blur it. And obviously, if there's a blur, there's also sharpen. It's just for photo manipulation, anyways. And color balance, you want to make it more reddish, you want to have more yellow, green color. So, um, if you want to somehow manipulate the colors, your these are what you're beginning for. Right? This is one grayscale and vignette. Right, if you want to be more artsy in terms of about like doing your, your, your canvas in such a way, look. It makes a more dramatic effect. Alright, now if you will notice this too. Right, what is what is that? Right. Um Alpha Lock, right? This is the Alpha Lock right here. Now what does the Alpha Lock or this icon signify right okay for example like um, let's choose yellow as the background okay that's your background right there let's duplicate that let's make a duplicate copy of it see you see you see what I'm doing right there so for example, if I want to duplicate a copy, there. So you got two, you got two copies of your of this artwork right here. So for example, if you want to manipulate this artwork, okay, on this particular layer, and for some reason everything went downhill, you can always have a backup copy, right? There's a tons of tons of ways for you to do that, but that's the most easiest thing. You can also do a crop. For example, if you want to copy that using the crop tool, which is right over here, if you want to crop it, right? I crop it, right? So, so be sure that you're on the layer that you want, that you intended to copy something, right? And then if you want to copy it, all you have to do is you see these icons over here. Let me just, uh, just go back there. It is the cut. This is a copy and paste it is over here. Again, cut, copy, paste. They're always in tandem. I'm not pretty sure why, but again, thank God for that. So, first thing you need to do, crop. Now you have selections, either you want it in the rectangular form, ellipsis, lasso. This one right here. That's locked if you not if you didn't get the full version. Because the wand works wonders because let me just show you. And um, if you switch this, if you put it on the high position, the greater chance that it will be covered. See? You can also this this is a, um, a lifesaver. For example, if you want to just crop a certain part of your drawing, you just need to lower it down. If you want to crop the entire image, if you want to just crop the entire thing for the heck of it, there it is. Okay, but let's first start with a triangle, uh, with a rectangle. So, cut. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I, forget. I almost forgot about that. Be sure to, you know, make sure to utilize the uh, this. Uh, I for visibility. 
All right, so for example, like I want to cut that. Be sure that it's highlighted. Be sure that that's gray because that is the indication that you're working on that layer. So if we're going to cut that, boom, put it on the other layer, bam. You see? Uh, if you want to copy it, you can actually copy it if you want. Go to the, it's already there anyways, right? But if you just want to copy it, for example, let me just delete everything, you know? And I'm going to crop it again. Cop copy. Hide it. Paste. Boom. That's how easy it is. Now the alpha, the alpha lock. You know that thing we just discussing about the, um, the padlock with an alpha sign over there. What what does it do? Okay, what it does. For example, like I want to have it like this is the effect that you will be expecting. So you put that on alpha. See, see what I did there. I put it on alpha, and then watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna start from here. Wait a minute. Nothing happens, right? But when they come across, for example, like, let me just uh, have a visualization. So I'm going to start right here. Let's just disable the alpha lock. If, if the alpha lock is disabled, this is going to happen. Boom. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to be. You need to be on the same layer this layer right here. So for example, we're working on this layer right here, right? Without the alpha lock being engaged, this is what's going to happen. You drew... Uh, it, it affects the, uh, the image. But, if you do the alpha lock, okay, we have already enabled the alpha lock right so, like that. See what happens. The background, you see, when it, a while ago when I just brushed it right like that, the background and the image were affected. But with the alpha lock in, I can I can paint on the image, but no further. Paint the image, no further. Painting the image, no further. You get the drift. So if you want to black out this image like that, see what happens. It only paints on the active pixels on that particular layer. So it's giving you that silhouette effect. See? See what I did there? Alright, so for example, since you already did that, look at the trick. And if you want to do the unveiling, see what happens. I'm going to get this eraser. I'm going to erase that. Am I showing? See? See? It works like magic. Magic, I tell you. Magic. Again, alpha lock is very important if you want to paint on your on the subject that you want to manipulate without compromising the back part or the background or to any any other um just to keep it simple, it only affects on whatever image or, or the image that is on that particular layer. So, for example, if you have multiple layers, like you have an you have a an image over here, image over here, image over here, but you just want to paint this one. But obviously, since it's very intricate, you always do the alpha lock so that you can only manipulate the very thing on that particular image. So, see? I'm just swiping my, uh, my, my stylus like hell here, and it only affects this particular image. If, for, if it were something like, if it's not alpha locked, then damn, look at it. So that is the beauty of the alpha lock. Now, um... So we pretty much covered all the, the basics. Now the, uh, the one thing that uh, we haven't tackled is the smudge and the, uh, the paint. So for example, I have an image again. Alright, let's, let's go with player 067 again. 
Now, the smudge tool over here, and this is going to be the like the cocaine, the cocaine of the artist, because if you want to have this realistic feel, all you only have to do is just smudge that. See? It smudges things. Again, with the use of this slider, it will tell it will manipulate how strong or how weak the activity is. For example, like uh, if I if I do it just right there, it will only do like that. But if I do it in overdrive, see what happens. One stroke damages the entire thing or smudges the entire thing. All right, so so we pretty much took care of everything here. And for example, there's one thing that I also missed. All right, for example, it only works with this. Or for example, if you um, you do this, right? You see this icon over here? Okay, that icon is the, um, let me just show you. It gives you option. Now, in a conventional way, in a conventional manner, uh, norm, uh, none, you can draw whatever you want, like a normal like you're drawing on paper. Mirror, if we choose that, see what happens. There will be a line that will just appear out of nowhere, but you can actually manipulate that. You can move it using your your finger. So this is for the movement, right? When I, when I put my finger on that particular icon, it moves. If I put my finger on this icon, see what it does. It rotates. And there's a good part. So I'm going to draw, let's say with that orientation, it copies whatever that line bisects to. You can do a Mandela effect if you want, see? This is much useful, for example, if you're drawing the eyes. I, I see artists who actually do like they drew the eye over they drew the eye over here. And then for some reason when they come to this part, it's all messed up, right? But not anymore with this kind of uh, with this mirroring tool because whatever you're doing on the other side it also does on the left to make it more symmetrical. So there you have it, right? So <laughs> it's a very useful thing if you, if you're like you know, if you're if you want to be precise on the measurement to make it more like you know, symmetrical. That is a tool for you. Now there's another one which is rotate. I'm not see. So if I want to get back to normal, line's gone. You can draw really in your will. Alright, so that is the basics or I hope that I didn't um, giving you like a, an, an overload of the uh... oh yeah uh, one last thing about the cropping thing uh, this we haven't uh, discussed the comprehensive thing about this icon over here for example so I'm going to put back squid game again All right so if you crop it will give you the list of options right for example this thing over here is by far the most important right because see what happens if I press that it will then give you these up oh no these no oh, wait let me just do that again so we cropped it right and then we choose again this one so if we press that 
then these are the options that you'll be seeing. It's more like you know, as you, uh, you know, you want to rotate your your image, you want to skew your uh, your image. So, for example, like I choose this green over here, right? This one over here. What it does is it moves your image to whatever place you want. This option over here, this arrow. What it does is it minimizes and it maximizes your image. If we're going to choose this one over here, this circle with a dot in between, in the middle, I mean, this is what's going to happen. It spins. You can rotate it there. You can rotate it anywhere. Okay. Now, this two. Okay. Wait a minute. This two over here, you just saw the action, right? So, uh, what it does, it does that, does that. Those actions are made possible by these two um, icons. Now, the other two icons over here, it's just like when you're editing a, an image on your phone. So, see, it's just like, it's just like uh, this, op, this um, function. These two are just a simplified version of this one. So these are simplified. This one is a much more efficient, right? Because if I choose this two, what it does is this. See? It's already pre-planned. But if you choose this, the one we just did a while ago, it's giving you much more versatility when it comes to the movement. You can move it any way you want. Without any borders or boundaries or limitations. I'm not pretty sure what this is, but it just realigns it. <laughs> this one right here. Okay, so for example, if I, uh, if, I if, if I do that, it just realigns. It just resets. All right, so we pretty much covered everything here. So again, just to recap, these are the pens, inks, smudge, and paint, what have you. Okay, these are the uh, the tools for cropping. Sometimes it actually, oh yeah, there's one more thing I forgot. I always doesn't. If, if you're a type of an artist who actually have problems with a stabilization, for example, like that, if you draw like that, if you draw like that, or it's not straight or not, what you do, there's an answer for that. And that is this, drawing tools. This thing, will help you eliminate the jitters let me just show you let me just show you now remember what i did a while ago right so with with that being activated and smooth right i'm activating a smooth now see it makes more smoother lines without that if, you're, if your hands are not trained on that particular smoothness, that's what you're going to get. Well, that, that's what you're going to get. But with smoothness, it's smooth. See the difference? Without it, it just follows what every hand's gesturing is in real time. And smooth it refines it and there's some other basic things over here we got the square you know, we got the circle you know basic stuff you know you will need that lines obviously okay got focal points if you want perspective that's what you get okay this for the focal that's where you get all the perspective like this 
this thing what you're seeing right now this this all this that's the thing right there all right and uh, if you want to be old school with no smoothness actually it's helpful because you can you can control the edges or because for example the problem with smoothness all right the problem with smoothness is whenever you do that it, it's just a, a continuous linger as long as you're not lifting your your pen it will just go smoothly but it doesn't really uh, it has an ups and downs the pros are that it, you can create smoother lines the downside is you can't manipulate that for example like for example like normal it is normal see I can manipulate even further but of course I'm, com I'm taking out the smoothness of the line but again if you want to be more complex if we want to be like more quicker then apparently that's the thing to go all right so that's pretty much it now uh, those are the things that you need to know about art flow again <clears throat> this is my preference I do believe that art flow is by far the most efficient user-friendly drawing app out there uh, there's a free version that you can download <clears throat> but it has some limitations some of the brushes are actually like locked so you can't use it but if you purchase it for for a one-time fee then you'll be getting everything I mean we have even tackled the old the, the other complicated stuff but those are the things that you need to know when you're using this application so anyways um, I will be um, I'll be leaving you now um, hopefully that you have something if you have learned something please do uh, you know just remember it uh, you're welcome if you're new to my channel please do uh, check some other videos that I have made most of them are drawing uh, there's some time-lapse sketches there's some tutorials so um, hopefully this helps you and um, hopefully your uh, your day is doing great I know it's still a pandemic so um, Hopefully you guys are okay, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do. And until then, my name is Andrew from Clueless Artist, and I'll be uh, I'll be seeing you. Let me just let me just get back there. <laughs> well, thank you very much for for uh, for viewing my, this video. And again, my name is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next one. So there it is. Um, it took like forty something minutes. Um, to uh, for you guys to undergo that I do appreciate your patience regarding about like you know watching the video how the art flow works and hopefully um, you take that something with you along the way and uh, if you're new to my channel please do subscribe and uh, well you know if you do like the videos and uh, hopefully I'll be uh, making some newer contents on how to uh, like, like a tutorial on how to draw and uh, hopefully um, we can build a, a much more better community, you and me. All right, so I um, hope you guys are safe. Again, my name is Andrew, and um, I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care.